back the message. Okay, so so Bob wants to send something to Alice. Bob will encrypt using Alice public key, which he he can find out because it's public. But when Alice receive it, uh, she need her only thing key that can decrypt is her Alice private key. So in case the message came went to someone else, went went, went to say uh, someone like like uh, John, if John does not have Alice private key, John cannot decrypt. Okay, John will just see this this is uh, random sort of looking string. Okay, that is how how the uh, the security. Okay, okay, so. Uh, that's the using the key, okay. So this is how you encrypt and decrypt now in the modern modern world now, in the modern cryptography. Um, the other thing that's very important is what we call digital signature. I think it's even more important in, in blockchain. Is to make sure it's, it's for authenticity to verify authenticity. For example, it's just like in the real world, right? I mean, you you sign something, right? And that you're supposed to be. Uh, your signature so so give the attestation that you 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 sign it and then if someone fake your signature that could be an issue okay so the signature a valid digital signature okay would be something that you want to make sure that people can authenticate that who sent the message or who who signed the message okay that's one thing the other thing you want to make sure that when the message being passed okay the message okay is not able to there there's some integrity Okay, nothing will change. Okay, you can detect that someone changed the message. And third is something also very important is that uh, what we call the non-repudiation, meaning that if a sender okay uh, can sign it okay, and the other recipient receive it okay, and then she able to verify the signature okay, and the sender cannot say they did not sign it. Okay, let me illustrate this using this diagram here. Okay, let's say uh, Alice, okay, wants to um, uh, send some uh, some document, let's say, to, to Bob, and and then she digitally sign it, okay? So what does Bob want to know? Bob wants to know a, a few things. Bob wants to know that really the message comes from Alice, okay? Okay, so how so how, how does the whole thing that, uh, work? Let's say the message is hello, Bob, okay? So Alice, let's say she wants to sign the message, Okay, so Alice then will use her private key, Alice private key. Okay, uh, let's say you don't, you can encrypt the message, or you don't have to. Here, you don't want to encrypt the message, but you can also encrypt the message. Okay, then this, then this is the signature on the bottom. Okay, okay, and then this thing is passed to Bob, and Bob receiving that, he will verify it. Okay, using Alice public key. Okay, two things. Okay, uh, the the algorithm. Okay, if indeed. The uh, message come from Alice. The, pop, the using Alice public key, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get a we we'll able to verify and get a yes, yes, it come from Alice. Okay. Also, if somehow the message was being interrupted in in the transition, and then change the message, the uh, you are not able to verify it. Okay, that's the integrity part. And third, it's also what we call non-repudiation is that, okay. That um, let's say uh, Alice, okay, uh, Bob is able to verify the signature of Alice, okay, using the public key, and then let's say for some reason there's some dispute, and Alice say that well no I did not sign it, okay, someone else somehow uh, uh, fake my my signature, but you are not able to do that because it turns out in the whole setup, the only if Alice indeed signed with her private key, the only key that can verify is. Uh, uh, sorry, let me say again. If indeed Alice uh, uh, public key is able to to verify the uh, signature, it must have come from Alice private key. The signature must have come from Alice private key. It cannot come from other people. Okay. So in other words, Alice cannot say that someone uh, fake okay the, the signature unless unless of course if someone somehow took uh, were able to steal her private key. If that didn't happen. The fact that the Bob can verify uh, Alice, uh, the signature by Alice public key, it must have been come from Alice. Alice cannot deny it. Okay, this is very important, as you will see, because uh, we talk about transaction using blockchain. Uh, so all these transactions on chain, you need to sign it. Okay, let's say 
uh, imagine bank A sign a uh, the transaction, bank A sign it, okay, and send to bank B. If bank B is able to verify the signature using bank A public key, okay, so then bank A later on cannot say they did not sign it because the only key that can uh, that can use to sign that maybe will ver verify with bank A public key must come from bank A private key. And you assume that the private key are not being stolen, so it must have been come from bank A. Okay, this is very important, okay. So as we are going to see, so uh, we have this, uh, the encryption. And you notice that the, the two things are not exactly the same, okay. In, the, in case of the sending a message, you're using a public key first to encrypt and then private key, you're using the other person, okay. Bob using Alice, okay. But in the digital signature, right, Alice is using her set of keys. She used her, her key to sign it, and then other people use her public key to verify. You can see that it's some kind of, um, it's, it's not a, a symmetric, okay, they, they somehow the role of the are sort of being changed. Okay, this is more, something to keep in mind because uh, otherwise you, you might mix up, okay. So just to summary, okay, your private key is key, okay, because the private key allows you to sign it, okay, and uh, your private key allows you to, to decrypt it, okay, so you're not, uh, you, you must keep your private key, okay, okay in, uh, uh, in a way that no one can able to steal it, okay, that's the important part. Okay, so as I say, uh, in the deal signature, you, you have using the key, so you will create a signature by using a pi as the signer private key, okay, sign of the message, and the verification is the, whether someone receive it, it will use the signer, the public key to verify. And then you must make sure a uh, property must let all valid signature go verify. Meaning that if indeed the signer use the signer public key to sign, the public key can verify is one thing. And the signature is infeasible to forge. Meaning that somehow you uh, you cannot, uh, let's say the signer, so forge means that someone else other than the signer uses his private key to sign, but yet, okay, Let's say let's say Alice okay want to sign okay so Alice one way is that Alice sign private key able to force me that somehow let's say another person John John use her private key his private key to sign yet if the receiver recipient can use Alice public key to verify that means someone is forge a signature okay that is also not allowed even a good digital scheme okay uh so that's the only two things remember in the in the uh, using this key pair is to do signature and to use encryption and decryption. Uh, here are just the same thing. I mean, in terms of the two methods, uh, I say if the curve, they are, if we, with current computer, no one break it, but if you, you, you're hearing a lot of things about quantum computer, uh, if indeed there's a quantum computer, you can break them easily. That's why people are looking at other kind of, uh, but don't worry, I mean, it's, it is something that I mean, we should not worry. Other people, are more concerned if someone can break it in quantum computer. Um, besides the signature and the uh, encryption, there's another thing very important uh, you need to know, which is the what we call hash function. Okay, this will come up all, uh, all the time. Okay, in, in blockchain, and what the, what is it? Okay, okay, your hash function. Just look at the example in the bottom. Okay, I, I have a string, okay, which turned out to be a sentence. The cat sat on the mat, okay? So if I apply this so-called hash function to it, you will generate this thing on the right, which is some random looking uh, output, okay? Uh, SHA, which stands for secure hash algorithm, is one kind of hash function, okay? and it turns out that this is the kind of hash function being used by blockchain. A lot of the blockchain uh, uh, and network. Okay, the super called SHA-256, 256 bit. Okay, so a few command. Of course, there are different kind of hash functions. So in the bottom, I apply the same, I have the same input, the cat on the mat, but now I have a different hash function. The output, of course, is different. Okay. Uh, you notice that the the output on the map MD5 is much smaller than the uh, the SHA-256. So here's the thing: for hash function, it's just some kind of algorithm that 
uh, transform an input to output. But the thing to, 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 to notice is that the input can be of any size and length. But the output has usually a fixed length, okay? For example, 256 means the output is at 256 bit, okay? Uh, so the out input can be very big, can be the whole, can be the whole, you, all the book in the world, right? It can be anything, I mean, but the output, the size is always fixed, okay? That's the important to remember. So what are the properties of the hash function? Okay, the first one is that it is so what we call deterministic. Uh, there are no randomness in it. What it means is that let's say I have, again, using the same input, the cat cell, the mat, 